There are numerous foods in Hong Kong that can claim to be the dish of the city, but when it comes to the quintessential Hong Kong drink, there's really no argument. That honour goes unequivocally to Hong Kong milk tea. Cups of this creamy, full-bodied beverage are sipped down in the thousands across the city every day. And being such a popular drink that is so emblematic of Hong Kong's culture and identity, there's fierce competition among cafes and restaurants for the distinction of the best cuppa in town. In this episode, we're heading to one of the spots that is consistently named among the city's elite milk tea purveyors, Sunwa Cafe in Changsha Wan. This old, incredibly authentic cha cha tang has been giving locals a caffeine kick since all the way back in 1966. And in this episode, we're going to check out this local gem's milk tea and signature dishes to see if it lives up to the hype. This is Sam Eats It. Hey guys, thanks as always for joining me. Today we are in the very local, down-to-earth neighbourhood that is Chung Shawan. But before we're heading to Sunwa Cafe, which is just around the corner, let's first talk a little bit about the history of milk tea in Hong Kong. Milk tea culture was brought to Hong Kong in the 19th century by the British, but for decades the drink was predominantly only drunk by Westerners in high-end restaurants, and it remained very much an unaffordable, out-of-reach luxury as far as the local working classes were concerned. This all changed though after World War II, when Dai Pai Dong open air stalls and traditional cafes around the city started serving up a twist on British milk tea that was catered more to the local palate, forgoing the gentle flavours of the British original version in favour of a stronger brew that was made creamier with the addition of evaporated milk. The result was a new kind of milk tea that was as fiercely unique as Hong Kong itself, so much so in fact that it's since been named as one of the city's intangible cultural heritages. Now there's some serious competition and debate as to which establishment out of the thousands that serve milk tea in Hong Kong is the best. But Sunwa Cafe is a name that more often than not is central to this debate. So without further ado, let's go in there, try some of their milk tea and other menu items as we learn a little bit more about this stirring part of Hong Kong's culture. Let's do it. So can we get um, lighter, mm -hmm. long go on guy? Long go. Uh, and dan tart yak go. Yak go. Uh, and uh, the beef satay mm -hmm. noodles. Okay. And and then what what else is the specialty? Uh, the pork chop spaghetti with ketchup. Excellent. Yeah. Can we get one of those as well, okay. please? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just ordered. Can't wait for this. Sounds yummy. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much. Go side. Go side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we've just got delivered our order, and uh, we've gone and got a few of their specialities from the menu to go along with our milk tea. We've got ourselves uh, one of their egg tarts, a bowl of beef satay noodles, and this spaghetti tomato pork chop concoction and all three of these they're pretty much the three most talked about dishes on the menu food wise anyway of course all known locally for being delicious uh, but you know what enough about the food before any of that let's first talk about the tea because that's the reason we came here right uh, now, as a few of you may remember, in the Chungking episode a little while back, uh, we talked about the intricacies of milk tea and the different types of milk tea and what goes into them. Don't worry if you haven't seen it, I'll put a link to that video in the description below. Uh, but anyway, here, let's carry on in the same vein and talk a little bit more about Hong Kong milk tea, namely how it's made, because the technique that goes into it is truly special and really unique. Uh, colloquially, it's called silk stocking milk tea, and it's called that because the entire process kind of revolves around straining the tea in this cloth bag that kind of looks like a silk stocking. First, the tea master scoops the tea into the bag, and then hot water is poured through the bag, and the tea is left to steep in a tall metal teapot. 
When sufficiently steeped, the tea is then strained through the stocking or pulled typically four or five times between teapots to get that flavor nice and strong. After it's been pulled, the tea is poured over evaporated milk, usually at a ratio of 70 to 30, and voila, you have a cup of Hong Kong milk tea. Now, of course, there are subtle differences in the way that each tea master, each shop, prepares their Hong Kong milk tea with subtle variations in the temperature of the, uh, the water that's poured, the time the tea is left to steep, the number of times it is pulled, and even the height at which the tea is pulled. And all these are said to have an effect on the nuanced flavor of the tea, and in some cases, even separate ordinary tea from stellar tea. Now, this tea that we've got right here, as I said in the intro, is one of the most renowned and reputed teas in the city. So. Should we stop talking and have a sip of this and do what we came to do? It looks absolutely delicious. Let's try it, yum. Oh, that is really yummy. Mm. Uh, super luxurious, it's super velvety. Uh, it's got a full flavor and it just swims around your mouth. Ah. Yeah, super luxe, super creamy, velvety, rich, indulgent, and it's just so different to English milk tea. Whereas milk tea is kind of soft and comforting in a almost a diluted way. You know, milk tea in English culture is quite gentle, actually. This is not like that. It's, it's very decadent. It kind of like smacks you in the face with the flavor, gets all in your mouth with the, the creaminess and the smoothness of it, and it's just, it's lovely. I could drink at least one of those, maybe maybe even two or three every day if I had the opportunity. That is really good. So of course that creaminess comes from the evaporated milk that's in there. And it's kind of interesting to think why is evaporated milk such a key component of Hong Kong milk tea? Well, historically the Chinese weren't that big into dairy. In fact, cow's milk just wasn't a thing in Chinese culture like forever. Uh, so when the British turned up in Hong Kong in the mid 19th century with a tea that they had to have milk in, which was completely sacrilege to the Chinese, by the way, they would not even think of corrupting the flavor of their wonderful tea with something like cow's milk. But when the British came, they were kind of at a bit of a loss because there was just no cow's milk infrastructure in place. Uh, and this made cow's milk a very expensive commodity. It wasn't actually until the early 20th century with the advent of being able to condense milk so it could be tinned and shipped off across the world without spoiling that evaporated milk became so popular. Evaporated milk was cheap, easy to store, long lasting, and most importantly, it was delicious. So when Cha Cha Teng and Dai Pai Dong open her stalls started serving tea mid-century, of course they were gonna use evaporated milk. And they still do to this day because at this point, using anything else, it just wouldn't be Hong Kong milk tea. Mm. In Cantonese culture, it's common to enjoy milk tea at a cha cha teng with friends. And in that vein, I've invited my good friend and local musician, Glenn Lloyd, who coincidentally is also our cameraman today, to come and try the tea at Sunwa Cafe and give his general thoughts on the place. Like I said, he's a musician and he rocks. So I'll put a link to his music in the description for anyone who's interested. Okay, so Glenn, how is that milk tea? Mm. Yeah, it's so good. It's just so Hong Kong. The smell, even just looking at the cup, it's always going to remind me of Hong Kong. It's so rich and flavorful. And what about the ambience of the cafe? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's chaotic in a place like this. People have just been in and out while we're filming this. And it's, um, yeah, but it's also kind of calming at the same time. This kind of place is always really reliable, especially when you're in a very kind of local area like this um, and you can just quickly order something and in and out quality you know exactly what you're gonna get and uh, kind of nostalgic as well <laughs> mm. thanks Glenn all right back to it so now let's move on to the food first let's try the dan tart or egg tart this looks incredible. Ah, oh, I mean, look at it. It's just puff pastry. Ah, oh, just completely, it just looks incredible. Like a yellow volcano crater oh, about to spill over the edge. What's interesting is that 
This is actually a bakery too. I mean, how awesome is that? So they bake these things fresh and the bread, a bunch of other stuff too. Bake it fresh every morning. Yum, let's dig into this. Yum, yum. That is really, really good. It's this puff pastry crust is really sweet actually, and then it's just kind of complemented by the the egginess of the inside of the tart. Lovely texture, firm but not too firm. Just falls apart in your mouth. Everything, but at the same time, you can still hold it without it collapsing. And it's just ah. Mm. We've done an episode on egg tarts at the Tai Chong Bakery, and uh, those were fantastic, incredible egg tarts. This stands completely alongside them. Absolutely incredible. Yum. Ah. Mm. So next, let's move on to the beef satay noodles. Um, I was actually on an hour in about whether to get this because we tried beef satay noodles in the Chung Hing episode, but you know, these come highly recommended. Uh, they're a bit of a legendary dish around here and they do look fantastic now they've arrived here. So let's uh, give them a try. Mm. Again, really, really good. This is absolutely delicious, the beef, lovely and tender succulent the noodles nice and bouncy and that satay oh super strong that peanutty flavor just dances around your mouth mm. that's a good quality bowl of nudes yum 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 mm. and now let's get on to the third and final specialty most talked about food dish at this place anyway which is the pork chop spaghetti tomato noodles um i'm not really sure what to expect here i'll be honest it's it looks uh very eclectic let's say i've not really seen pork and tomato sauce and bits of sweet corn and spaghetti all together before but there you go uh, i love the creativity let's have a try of it really nice yeah um it tastes like typical cha cha tang food in the sense that it's really confident there's something about it just reminds you of childhood you know i've said this before with foods at dai pai dong and cha cha tang but it's just so very true um i get flashbacks to watching cartoons as a kid eating this eating this kind of thing and it's just gives you a nice warm feeling it's like a nice warm hug on a plate covered in tomato sauce. Brilliant, very good. I'm absolutely stuffed. That was really, really nice. Just great comfort food. Everything from the dan tart, the egg tart, to the beef satay noodles, to the tomato spaghetti pork chop stuff. Just everything that's fantastic and a great complimentary aspect to this tea because this tea is just just out of this world no wonder it has such a great reputation not just in chung sha wan but in hong kong as being one of the best brews in the city it's great what these guys do here they give you a really comfortable experience the service is really nice and the fact that they have their own bakery it just kind of puts this cha cha tang up a level uh, but unfortunately as with everywhere there's a time when we must depart but actually before that we have called natalie who's the owner of this place she runs it and she's kindly agreed to talk to us about this place's history uh, possibly its future and just the story in general so before we get out of here let's have a quick chat with natalie hello uh, my name is natalie and uh, i'm the owner of this uh, sunwa cafe it's been running for 56 years since my grandpa and then my father now 
uh, is me, <laughs> the third generation uh, of this cafe. We, we didn't move anywhere. You can see the old style of our cafe have two stories. Because now in Hong Kong, you cannot find anywhere. Uh, just a few of them uh, left. Mm -hmm. I think uh, my cafe is popular because uh, we have run for over 15 years and uh, our dishes are popular to, to them and they will be visiting us uh, every day or, or once a week because they are used to eat our food and uh, like our food <laughs> and uh, maybe delicious I think yeah because uh, we keep the recipe from uh, before till now, yeah, we use the old form formula. To mix the milk tea, we use four kinds of tea leaves and we choose a very expensive one to mix it so uh, the taste will be different from the others. Because this old fashion cafe is just a few left in Hong Kong, I will try my best to keep it, but uh, Maybe because uh, uh, running this cafe is uh, difficult too. I will not push my child to, <laughs> to do it, uh, but uh, if they like, I will let them try. Uh. Thank you very much, Natalie. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. And that concludes our visit to Sun Wai Cafe. We hope you enjoyed our time here and learning about Hong Kong milk tea with us. And if so, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and feel free to let us know in the comments where you'd like us to explore next. Thanks for watching, and until the next feast, take care and stay hungry.